You're watching WHPS, Highland Park, Detroit. WGPR Detroit HD2. The views and opinions expressed on the following show are not necessarily the views and opinions of WHPS, its affiliates, management, or sponsors. My name is Watson. And my name is Mariah. We're 12 years old. And we're representing Old Redford Academy Middle School. And we're here to talk about drugs. Drugs are very dangerous and unhealthy. And they can also ruin a relationship with your loved ones. Go talk to a family member, a friend, even a teacher. Or you can go to a therapist or if you need any extra help, you can go online and find all of those. Hashtag not worth it. Good day, good people. This is your personal change coach and host of Expose Under the Sun, Heather Hedheru. And today, as every time we come together, there are a couple of things that we do to start off the show. I'm going to introduce my guests, but not yet. We're going to start off first by talking about the challenge for this year. So for the remainder of the year 2022, what we want you to do is to be challenged by finding ways to reduce your stress. We know that stress is one of the most devastating aspects of our community and our community wellness. So we wanna make sure that every episode that we share together, that you have some tools, mindset, reset that you need to make sure that that is being addressed every day. And so the challenge is that you were supposed to find at least three ways every month to release stress and find your joy. So each time it should be something different. It shouldn't be the same thing every time. So I'm gonna share some of mine. My special guest here is gonna share some of hers and we're gonna get started with our chat today. So our uh, episode today is around reshaping your story. And so our special guest is gonna give us some insight to that. And before we get started, I wanna make sure that I let you know how you can have your products advertised on this show. One of the ways that you can do that is by reaching out to Valerie Lockhart, who is our sponsor for Expose Under the Sun. She's also the editor of Detroit Native Sun News. So if you're looking for advertising in the newspaper or through the show, please reach out to Valerie. Her phone number is 313-457-5944. Again, that's Valerie at 313-457-5944. I also want to say thanks to our our um, engineer who makes sure that our show goes well, uh, Patrick. I know he's in the background doing what he does best. And also our producer of our show, Sharon Dumas, and my other co-host, who is Darren Griffin, who you'll see at the next exciting episode of Expose Under the Sun next Tuesday. So today we're going to start off with the challenge. My challenge for you, remember, is finding three new ways to relieve your stress and find your joy. So one of the things that I, I did in the last three days and a habit that I started maybe three months ago is just to walk in the morning. So the first thing in the morning, I take about a 45 minute walk. While I'm walking, I always listen to a motivational, um, a motivational message. And this message for me is about the game of life. And that message was so profound. It has a combination of scriptures. It has a combination of insights and how you can put together your particular game of life based on the things that you need or are challenged by. And the second thing that I wanna share with you is just a simple sit and walk or just chill at the park. And in our community, there've been a lot of parks that have been open. I think part of the connection to community wellness is to make sure that those spaces that we share are utilized first and that we are maintaining that and don't have the expectation that somebody else is going to do it for you. So one of the things that I do when I go walking is I take a bag with me and if I see trash around that park, I pick up the trash myself because I'm a part of the community, I'm a part of the community wellness. And so my effort is to make sure that it is presentable for our children to be a part of it and for anyone else who wants to enjoy it. So those are two things that I do. I walk, I listen to a motivational uh, message, 
and I also sit at the park, but I also clean it too. So as we take this journey together today, I want to share with you my special guest in our studios, Alexandra Nichols. Alexandra <laughs> is taking pictures as we're speaking. Alexandra is a local film producer. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about her journey there. Um, and also, we're going to start off with putting you on the spot, Alex. Mm -hmm. I call her Alex. Alex, on the spot, about what do you do to find your joy? How do you relieve stress? I relieve stress by, in the morning, I, I do like you. I have to. I have to read something positive. I have to read something that's going to uplift me. I have to... Um, involve myself in something that I can reconnect to throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And like you, picking up trash, you can think about that and feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think that you spent 45 minutes walking for the day, you can look to what you did and feel good. Mm -hmm. And so what I do to look to myself and feel good, um, especially, <clears throat> you know, if it's a confusing or frustrating mm -hmm. or just, you know, a harebrained day, is to make sure I read scripture. And I get my scripture from um, the AME Church. I've been involved in the AME Church since my birth and I feel very comfortable um, receiving those emails every day and reading them every day. And they, I send them to my friends and I send them to family. I send them to my sons and it makes me feel good that I'm helping others uh, start their day right. And I can look to that and it makes me feel good. Thank you. Thank you. So for those of you out there watching, listening, and you need some some boost in the morning, reading is always a great one. So thanks for bringing that to Alex. Um, we have a couple of questions that we're going to share with Alex today about her journey. So the first one is tell us about tell us about your journey. Tell us about your background and how you got started, your education and how you got interested in even being in film. Wow. It's I just l always loved school. Uh, maybe I just following my siblings, you know, <laughs> it's something I had to do. <laughs> I might as well love it. And I, ha I, I got that attitude early. Um, and I just never lost it. Mm -hmm. I think you know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I just really enjoyed school. I, I like the social socialization of school. I, I mm -hmm. like the learning. I like gym. <laughs> I like outdoor time. Um, though I look forward I look forward to those things you know as a student as a young student but you know in middle school they they help you to try and think about what you're gonna be and what you're gonna do and you know my counselor said well what are you gonna do and I just said mm, I, I want to be a filmmaker I was in a sixth grade I had no idea that's what I wanted to do I went to Winterhalter if anybody out there went there mm -hmm. I had Miss Granson she was nice and lovely and um, I want to be a filmmaker. I didn't know how to do it. Didn't know how I was going to get there. But I knew that if I kept my eyes peeled and my ears open, I would get there. But before that, I remember seeing images on TV of African Americans uh, in commercials and not many in the TV shows. But um, there were, you know, sparse ones that we saw I mean we there were some but it wasn't that many but what captivated me most were the commercials and the African Americans in these jobs that we really never saw African Americans in but they were coming in in view as um, some black advertising agencies delved into target marketing to the black community mm -hmm. and so that just sparked my interest and I can remember just looking at the TV and wondering how am I getting this signal how are we watching this here? How am I watching this in the den? Why am I, why is, you know, what is it? And so I just began learning about radio, about TV, and eventually about film, and I stayed the course. So tell, tell us a little bit about some of the, maybe some of the companies that people might recognize that you've worked with before. Oh boy. <laughs> well, first and for, foremost, I have to say that I got my start at DPSCD which was DPS at the time. And I was so grateful. I mean, I was working there as a substitute teacher, as a building sub at Benjamin O. Davis, and I got a call um, at the end of the school year that there was a radio TV technician available over at Northwestern High School. 
My dad graduated from Northwestern. So did a lot of my family members <laughs> and a lot of great Detroiters, too. Yes, absolutely. What a blessing for Northwestern. And I just, I just had to continue to push myself and seek an opportunity to, to move forward. Now, I forgot the question. So the other, like other organizations. Oh, so other I know. organizations. So right. I was, yeah, at Northwestern, I had so much fun. I was able to have my kids. You know, I was married. I had my kids. It was, I loved having my kids in a school environment. You know, they were young, one, two, three. You know, just that opportunity, being off at 3.30, you know, <laughs> being able to be with my kids. But, and working in radio and TV. That mm -hmm. was the thing. The school had the TV station and radio studios. So, um, not only did I work with DPSCD, I worked with WDET in the summers when I was off. I worked with um, WDIV Channel 4. I've worked in Atlanta with Turner Broadcasting, and I've worked in San Francisco, and I've worked in Los Angeles um, with some notable people. Mm -hmm. um, I did um, teenage films with Fox Atomic, and I did some documentaries and commercials too many to name for different organizations and businesses but how long have you fun. been in this work wow <laughs> i always seem to think of myself as a late bloomer because you i but i've been in it a long time but so 20 years is that safe 20 plus okay 20 plus years mm -hmm. safe to say that you've been in the industry 20 plus years for certain and and would you say that you had the opportunity to move around in that industry did you had try try on different like were you an engineer? Were you oh, producer? Yeah. Were yeah, you well, that was the fun part. Fun oh my cameras. gosh, goodness. Before I even left here in Detroit, I had to seek out the film community here. And that's what I did. I worked on so many commercials here, um, documentaries, before I even ventured out to go to Atlanta or to um, California. And I was able to, I remember on one commercial, there was two girls named Alex, <laughs> two girls named Alexandra, <laughs> and we were close in position. So we had to give ourselves, well, I chose to choose another name. But anyway, I was a second AD on a film or a commercial, and uh, I changed my name to Memphis, which was the catalyst for my film company, Memphis okay. Films. Okay. And actually, we, we may know the historians out there, the name Alexandria comes from Egypt. Mm -hmm. And so before that it was called memphis so it's a connection with my name's sake okay. but as an audio engineer um i've worked as a, a art pa i've done directing producing um casting a lot of things wow. in the whole spectrum of filmmaking and tv well wh what was your favorite though of all the roles that you had and the hats that you wore which was your favorite gosh you know being on set and just being around people who have never been on set before and making them feel comfortable. So that's really in the director's department where you are uh, a key PA or key set PA where you work with the extras and the special talent that's involved or even the stars and you get them situated and you let them know everything's gonna be okay. You're doing all right. What do you need? I, I really like that role of making sure that everybody on set, even to the extras felt comfortable. Yes, you do have great hospitality skills, I might say. Thank you. Okay, so how about some insights that might help people share their stories? So I want you to talk a little bit about this this passion that you have of documentaries and, and uh, the short film. So if you would share a little bit about that. Oh, my gosh. Thank God for the short film form. Um, it helped filmmakers realize that you know you don't have to put out a whole feature film to get noticed you know mm -hmm. and so um, I was able to really find a genre niche inside the film community with oral history filmmaking and I started with my own family um, a, a film called Step to Hell that I won Best Picture and Best Screenplay for as a short at the historic Castro Theater in San Francisco California um, as I was ending my master's program and that pro project brought me so much joy that I knew that that was my calling in filmmaking not only do I want to do narrative and documentary filmmaking but the oral history portion mm -hmm. sitting down with with people that are living to tell the stories that may not 
get disseminated right um far and wide right to those of us those of the family members that may still be living they may not even know these stories and and we have loved ones that pass on that take stories with them and so it's important that w those stories are shared like they were shared with my family and I was able to capture that in a narrative form it's just important and I did a piece in um, Pomona California for my good friend Donna Weldon and her family and um, it was called 18 miles and uh, Mr. Mr. Lincoln I asked him Mr. Lincoln which story do you want to do I recorded eight stories that he told me orally eight wow. And I read them back, typed them up, read them back. And um, he says, well, I've got to do the story of when I met my wife. <laughs> Such a What's heartwarming, a so beautiful, mm. so beautiful, 54 years of love. Their families just grew and grew. And what, what was so beautiful about that project was that all of the grandkids got involved in the reenactments. <gasps> Wow. We have four reenactments in that in that piece. It was a 20 minute piece and it just we had the original dress. Wow. The original hand uh glove, the original ring, his army uniform. It made everything special. So shopping for period pieces, shopping and getting things, you know, together. We shot the film in their home, in their backyard, in their flower garden. Um it just it just was a beautiful piece and um, the oral history of it and having the siblings come in and speak about their parents and the love that they had in their home. Mm -hmm. I know all families weren't like that, but we want to capture stories that we don't want to lose. The ones that of courage, of strength, of love, of challenges and um, success. Maybe there were hard times, but I'm sure your family at some point made it over and we want to capture those. Right. So how would a, a family go about capturing the story? So is that something that you help develop for it them? It is something or? I help develop because I ask them, what is the story that gets told every year at Christmas? You okay. know, you just, you, you <laughs> egg them on, they start laughing, you know, or they'll get a little solemn or, you know, I remember for my mom, it was hard for her to talk to me about her uncle who, who had been put in jail um, erroneously and all they had given him to eat was bread that they took the crust off of Wow and water now you know some stories are hard to tell you know but right. you can you can get to them if you just think a little bit you know and you think about those stories that you know that the the cousins 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 need to know right, right. okay uh, uh, of how you know the family moved from here to there maybe it was a start of a business or a hair salon mm -hmm. you know uh, or, or so many families that may have moved from the south to to the northern states and, and like mr lincoln he moved to pomona and started the first uh, full service station in pomona oh, first yes. black man to do so wow wow got out the army re-enlisted into the air force and then got out and opened a service station in wow. Pomona. Wow. So a journey. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So for those, um, those families who, let me make sure we get this out there first. Those families who want to reach out and maybe are interested in a, a, a film project like yours, um, do you want to share some information with sure. how they can reach you? Yeah, and it, it, it's no big deal either. It's, a lot of people think, you know, it has it to be a It is a big deal. Well, it is a big, it's a huge it is deal. A, okay, I'll, it's a <laughs> big deal to get the stories yes. down. Yes. yes, that is a definite huge deal. And I will, when you see the finished product, it will feel like a big deal. But the production process, I'll say the experience that I have mm -hmm. in helping families feel comfortable um, in whatever setting we're in, whether it's a park, a living room, a coffee house, to tell the story, however you feel best telling your story, I can help you I can help you find that comfortable space and if you do want to do a family story and you would like some information you can email me Heather keeps calling me Alexandra Overton <laughs> it's Alexandra Nichols Overton whichever you like but my email is A-O-V as in Victor E-R-T-O-N 
njc at gmail.com. Okay, we'll make sure you give it one more time before we close out today. Sure. So I do want to talk about um, talk about your passion. So I know that you mentioned that doing the documentary is one. So what are some of your other passions? What are some of the things that make you tick every day? What excites you about getting up in the morning? Well, you know, we talk about family all the time, but I had an idea. I love pizza. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) And um, I was in this pandemic. I was wondering, what can I do for Detroit? I don't, for some reason, it was not just for me, but what can I do for Detroit? Um, You know, in the midst of the pandemic and the insurrection, it's like, this is, we need stuff in our communities that bring joy. And what brings me joy? Pizza. (laughs) 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 Well, honestly, the... uh, my youngest son um, became addicted to pizza, I think, because I ate it so much when I was pregnant. <laughs> but he loves pizza. Every celebration we've had has been with pizza. <laughs> Kindergarten, I'm sorry, um, elementary school, middle school, high school, college has been at a pizza place. And he really, his love of pizza inspires me, too, till I decided to create a pizza company. Okay. And what's the name? The pizza company is called... Uh, Detroit Soul Pizza. Okay. (laughs) And what do we know about Detroit? It has soul. It has soul. Okay. It has soul. And Detroit um, has a lot of joy. It does. And so I wanted to put those two things together, the joy (laughs) of Detroit, which is our soul, and the joy of pizza. I think that that brings so many people together. How can you be at odds with somebody say you're in a meeting right Mm -hmm. and you have people on one side of the table and you're on the other obviously a contentious situation but we have to order pizza for lunch (laughs) or they've ordered pizza for lunch for everybody and they've asked so what are you going to do what makes your pizza unique what makes my pizza unique is that i have a special process okay okay it's not of a wood oven It's not a a typical way people will expect a pizza to be cooked, but it's a more healthy way. And I'm using the air fryer, Heather. An air fryer for pizza? Air fryer for pizza. uh, Pizza and an air fryer. Well, these are individual pizzas. Okay. Seven inch. Okay. So um, if you see me at a pop up, you know, you could get a pizza, a soda, a salad, or maybe a dessert. And that's your combo. Okay. okay, and this is a pizza where the, if you choose meat, because I do have the raw pizza, it's a <laughs> cheese pizza, if anybody n- can get that, <laughs> but um, my signature pizza is a fried chicken pizza, and that's air fried too, so we have a healthy pizza that we're going to share with the community, and okay. also share with, um, share the soul of Detroit. I'm hoping to get my pizza in the frozen food sections and maybe in some fresh deli sections. Okay. And that way families can enjoy um, a personal pizza that has Detroit soul. Okay, so can we still reach you at that if people um, are ready to make that, that next sure. step to take if you, that order? If you like to again. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about Detroit Soul Pizza, okay, you can give me an email at A O V E R T O N njc at gmail.com i'll be more than happy to talk to you about it let you know where we are in the process and how that we could help you with your um pizza needs thank you thank you welcome so i i I do want you to talk a little bit about this because i think i think for you were a traditional student college student and you're a non-traditional college student so can you talk a little bit that might encourage um those people who kind of fall within those lines Mm mm-hmm Mm -hmm. As a traditional college student, I mean, I made it through high school and I went to college with my college roommate (laughs) and uh, oh, just had the most wonderful time. But I I guess I took the normal steps. But as we got to the second year, I got married, (laughs) (laughs) fell in love, got married. And and I still graduated college in four years, though. I think that it's important to stay on track. Mm -hmm. Um, That's those uh, milestones really really set a a deadline for you and I think if you stick to it you you can be successful Mm -hmm. but being that I got married it looked like I was going to be off track but I made sure I did not get off track 
we started a family after I graduated and I just I decided to work in a school district you know until I was able to um, get enough skills or have my sons get old enough to maybe travel with me to a, a region where I could use my skills and develop my skills more in, in film and TV and that's where I headed um, I actually I'll say this I left uh, I went to a HBCU, Tennessee State University, mm -hmm. transferred to another HBCU in Wilberforce, Ohio, called Central State University. What a blessing. Um, the year that uh, Bill Cosby and Camille Cosby donated um, the monies to completely revamp the radio TV studios and provide opportunities wow. for Central State to still uh, pump out some of the best communications majors uh, that the nation has at a HBCU. Or from HBCU, but just taking my journey from working at Turner Broadcasting, uh, network operations, and I was able to do uh, audio engineering on the NBA on TNT and get involved in People TV and Public Access TV and in Atlanta and help the community express their voices and have nonprofits express themselves yes. on a weekly show, um, sharing their services and resources to the community. And then I was able to train the residents of Atlanta through our public access on TV production. Um, a lot of fun. Still, my stu my kids were involved because we had a youth channel with the public access, so brought my children right along with me. They're filmmakers. As a matter of fact, Bilal was a, uh, doing filmmaking. My youngest son um, covering the basketball team's video wow. at the home games. <laughs> Even <laughs> though he was a chemistry major, he the filmmaking skills carried over. So I always kept them with me in, in everything I did, but I decided, you know, TV broadcasting is fun, so much fun, so involved, meet so many people, especially on a public access level. Th I think that's gotta be my most fun okay. in terms of TV work. But um, I, I still had to fulfill my goal as a filmmaker. And yeah. so I visited San Francisco, and I saw this university there, and I went in and got more information and learned that they had one of the largest green screen studios in the West. Um, they had state-of-the-art equipment that I put my eyes on and hands on before I even attended. So I attended that school, and it, it took me out of a comfort zone, but I loved it. I found San Francisco to be very welcoming. I love the weather, very brisk. And then straight down to Hollywood after that, because wow. my mentor, after I won the awards, I had a mentor, and he invited me to Hollywood and to take a job. So, wow, it's been a journey. Absolutely, and we are so excited and proud to be here with you, to share the journey with you, to to know that there are people in our community who have this wealth of knowledge and talent, and that give us inspiration, that we can live our greatest dream. And I think that's a really important way to wrap up this show and to remind you that Expose Under the Sun is a community wellness opportunity for you. So take it all in, be who you were sent here to be, live and fulfill your greatest dream, stay well. This is your personal change coach, Heather Hedheru, and looking forward to seeing you in our next episode. Stay well. We'll see you soon. Take good care.